Luca Belgiorno Nettis. Th I must start by saying thank you to Simon Longstaff and the St James Ethics Centre for doing such good things. Thank you. We are here tonight to consider how our system of government impacts on our planet. Some of you of my generation might remember a publication called The Last Whole Earth Catalogue. It was back in 1973. In the inside front cover, there was that famous picture of the Apollo, that the, the Apollo 8 astronauts took of the Earth rising over the moon's surface. Yeah, this picture, in this picture, there was the little blue planet there. Next to it was some text with the words that read, the flow of energy through a system acts to organise that system. These were the words of a, of a US biophysicist called Harold Morowitz. They're kind of self-evident. Let me say them again. The, the energy, the flow of energy through a system acts to organise that system. I'd like to consider the energy in this room tonight. When we debate, as we are doing here this evening, we seek to divide our opinion. We seek to divide our energies. As entertaining and informative as it is, with my superb team here lined up against our respected colleagues in opposition, the flow of energy does not encourage common ground. It's not meant to. Imagine instead if the six of us were, were all deliberating together with you as well. I'd be more confident of a better energy, a better outcome. I know because I've done it with a crowd of people almost this size before. I know because it's for us, by us, of us. A little plagiarising there of uh, Mr Lincoln. <laughs> I think democracy can be defined as a system, a system to organise ourselves for no other reason but for ourselves. I'd like to repeat that. I kind of like that. I think democracy can be defined as a system, a system to organise ourselves for no other reason but for ourselves. I'm sometimes asked what got me into political reform. I work in a family business uh, as an architect in and around infrastructure projects and in that experience I came across governments of all persuasions and I found too often that good projects were being compromised by political expediency. I cite one example here which is the Sydney public transport system. So together with some like-minded colleagues, Cathy Jones, Lynn Carson, Ian Marsh, and we garnered some support from some distinguished ex-politicians, Fred Cheney, uh, John Button, bless his soul, uh, Jeff Gallup and Nick Greiner, we formed a research organisation called the New Democracy Foundation. We all thought we could do democracy better somehow. Debating entrenches division from the outset. It's a microcosm of how we do democracy today. Let's call it flawed democracy. We pit candidate against candidate in a winner-takes-all contest. The adversarial model of democracy, this flawed demo model, is all that most people know of democracy. When we say democracy is failing the planet, we say, of course it is. We're too busy bickering to bother about the planet. How can we expect to save the planet when we can't even save ourselves? Some might say that Australia has been well served by its governments for many generations. Others might say that the Aboriginal Australians were well served by their government for many more generations before. John Button said this generation needs a new involving mechanism. I think there is a palpable sense of unease with the way we do politics. There is such divisive, divisiveness in our political landscape, not just here, but also abroad. Just look at the US of A. That country's politics is hardly, hardly inspiring. 
its popular media is verging on the rabid, full of vitriolic, jingoistic sloganism. New media may bring connectivity, but it also fragments. And popular media somehow seems stronger than ever. In the centenary of Marshall McLuhan's birth, I'm, we're, we're inspired by his uh, turn of phrase. The medium is the message, the medium is the massage, the medium is the mass age. But no media in this mass age is yet to provide a deliberative space. Our parliaments, as the first and last bastions of deliberation, are struggling. Struggling because our politicians are busy debating to win the popular vote. This is where the energy is flowing. This looks like, must be, the politics of populism, more so than ever. So what can be done? When democracy was originally conceived in Greece, it was nothing like what we practice it today. The Greeks didn't vote for candidates. They elected their representatives by sortition, a random selection of the citizen class. They then voted on the issue. Their model had no campaigning or lobbying to win office. Our model is fundamentally different. It's based on the one that the American founding fathers established. They established the model for voting for candidates. The founding fathers actually rejected the very word democracy. They preferred the term natural aristocracy. This model, our model, pits candidate against candidate. We've groomed charismatic and articulate political performers whose primary skill is to debate, divide and conquer. Resolving issues of government have become secondary. But it's not the fault of the politicians. It's the system we've all signed up to. The adversarial energies of our system make our system adversarial. It's systemic. I ask, how can we reinvent our democracy? If the problem is adversarial politics, then we need to consider other models that are less adversarial, models that rely less on elections, that promote common ground, that have better deliberation, models such as Alex Sakaris's Citizen Senate or John Bernheim's Demarchy or even Confucian democracy or many other models. Many of the models have sortition, just like the Greeks. They are not voted in, they are not career politicians. These representatives are not campaigning candidates, they are not beholden to opinion polls, shock jocks or focus groups. I think, together with my colleagues, that it would be good to set up a review panel to review these models. We think that a panel is best constituted by a sortition process as well. It's amazing to realise that ordinary citizens, when they deliberate together, are quite extraordinary. The citizens' jury is the proof, played out in our courts every day of every week. And so is the research evidence, proof that a diverse group are often better than a panel of so-called experts. Once we see our democracy is flawed, the challenge and the opportunity is to believe in ourselves. When we are engaged, not simply as voters in an adversarial contest, we are more intelligent than we think. Democracy is defined in every handbook as free and fair elections, except the first book on the subject. We could carry on as we are, infecting life and our planet with bickering, vitriol and division. Or we could try and break the habits of the life of a lifetime, break the contract with its flawed democracy to try and save ourselves as well as our planet. Thank you.